In fact, for Donald Trump, the early 1990s were disastrous. His colossal real estate empire teetered on the edge with a staggering $3.4 billion in debt. His soon-to-be ex-wife Ivana was demanding $10 million. Walking down Manhattan's Fifth Avenue, he saw a blind man with a paper cup and realized the beggar's net worth was hundreds of millions more than his. These challenging times of the early 90s became Donald Trump's personal crucible. He not only survived, but believed that this searing experience played a pivotal role in shaping the qualities that eventually propelled him to secure the Republican presidential nomination. Let's look back. 1990s. After bankruptcies, Donald Trump goes from building to branding. In the vibrant landscape of the 1990s, Donald Trump was undergoing a transformation that was as dramatic as it was intriguing. The decade marked a pivotal period in his life, as he transitioned from being primarily known as a real estate mogul in New York, famous for his exploits in the 80s, to a figure who was gaining notoriety for his personal life. The era had seen the rise of the yuppies, the frenzy of buyouts, and the chaos of junk bonds. Amidst all this, Donald Trump emerged as a captivating personality, but not without his fair share of controversies. One of the defining moments of this era was Donald's evolving reputation as a ladies' man. He was often hailed as one of the most eligible bachelors in America during those times. The charismatic businessman seemed to have a knack for attracting attention, both in the media and among admirers. With his signature confidence, he stepped into the spotlight, commanding attention wherever he went. However, it wasn't just his business ventures that were making headlines. The drama truly began when Donald Trump's personal life took a tumultuous turn. He began an affair with Marla Maples, an aspiring actress, while still married to Ivana Trump. The public fallout of this affair was nothing short of ugly, and it eventually led to the dissolution of his marriage to Ivana in 1992. Reports of Ivana receiving substantial financial settlements as part of the divorce settlement only added to the intrigue surrounding the couple's split. Shortly after his divorce, Donald Trump married Marla Maples just two months after the birth of their baby girl. The whirlwind romance and subsequent marriage were topics of extensive media coverage. However, by the end of the decade, Trump found himself single once again. It was during this time that he seemed to embrace the doubting scene with gusto. The public image of Donald Trump as the man who dated a different woman every year was pervasive. Yet, in interviews, he defended his relationships, stating, I don't do that. I mean, I've been with a number of women but it's been over a fairly long period of time. I've had great relationships with women. He remained unapologetic about his choices and was candid about his preferences. When asked about his ideal date, he humorously quipped, How about Lady Diana? That would be interesting. When she's going to be available, I think my choice might be. During the tumultuous 1990s, Donald Trump's life seemed to be a roller coaster ride of controversy, both in his personal and professional spheres. With his characteristic bravado, he didn't shy away from making bold statements about his relationships with women. He often mused, Can you imagine how controversial I'd be? You think about Clinton with the women. How about me with the women? Can you imagine? It was a time when his personal life was a subject of fascination, and he seemed to revel in the attention. While his family life may have been on shaky ground, his business empire was also facing significant challenges. The headlines of the era accurately reflected the turmoil. The 1990s marked a pivotal period for Donald Trump, and he found himself in the midst of a financial storm that threatened to engulf his empire. One of the most significant events of this period was the grand opening of the Taj Mahal Casino Hotel in Atlantic City in April 1990. The spectacle was nothing short of extravagant, with lasers, fireworks, and miles of neon lights illuminating the night sky. Trump, known for his flair for the dramatic, spared no expense in making the Taj Mahal a memorable event. 
However, just months after its grand opening, the Taj Mahal encountered financial difficulties. It missed one of its debt payments, sending shockwaves through Trump's financial world. Facing the possibility of financial collapse, Donald Trump began scrambling for a bailout to salvage his empire. The situation was so dire that it hinged on the New Jersey Casino Commission's decision to approve Trump's bailout plan. The stakes were high, and Trump's business acumen was put to the test like never before. The 1990s is often remembered by most Americans as a period of prosperity, characterized by expanding companies, rising wages, and soaring stock prices. In fact, in 1997, Fortune magazine published a headline that read, These are the good old days. The U.S. economy is stronger than it's ever been before, capturing the overall optimism of the era. However, it's important to note that the decade didn't begin on such a rosy note. The 1990-91 recession was a challenging period for the country. For Donald Trump, specifically, the early 1990s marked a particularly disastrous phase in his life, as he candidly described it to Esquire magazine. In his interview with Esquire, Donald Trump shared a poignant moment from 1991 when he was walking down Fifth Avenue with Marla Maples. At that time, the financial markets were in turmoil, and the real estate mogul found himself facing dire circumstances. He recounted, I was walking down Fifth Avenue with Marla Maples in 1991. This was at the peak of the bad market. Across the street, I saw a man in front of Tiffany with a tin cup. I looked at Marla and said, You know, right now, that man is worth $900 million more than I am. Indeed, Donald Trump's financial troubles were widely publicized during the early 1990s. In 1990, Newsweek portrayed him as a figure tarnished by marital scandal, mired in debt, and negotiating with banks in an attempt to salvage his business empire. The magazine highlighted that he was burdened by a hefty $3.2 billion debt. The New York Post even mocked him with the headline, Uh-oh, as a reflection of his financial woes. What remains unclear is just how long Trump's financial struggles persisted. However, recent revelations from the New York Times, which published his tax records, indicated that as late as 1995, a period when the U.S. economy was on the upswing again, Trump was still grappling with significant financial challenges, reporting a staggering $916 million loss. Given what he had shared with Esquire about his dire financial situation in 1991, it appears that Trump's setbacks in 1995 may have been just one chapter in a larger narrative of spectacular financial losses that spanned several years. The stark contrast between Donald Trump's apparent success in the 1980s and his financial struggles in the early 1990s raises the question, what went wrong for the man who had been known for buying extravagant gifts like a yacht and a helicopter? To understand the origins of Trump's troubles, it's essential to look back at the trajectory of his career, which was marked by both highs and lows. In the mid-1970s, New York City faced a fiscal crisis, leading to a significant drop in commercial real estate prices in Manhattan. Capitalizing on this opportunity, Trump ventured into real estate development with financial assistance from his father. As the New York economy rebounded during the prosperous 1980s, Trump's fortune experienced substantial growth. However, a pivotal turning point occurred in the mid-1980s when legalized gambling expanded in Atlantic City. Trump seized this opportunity and borrowed substantial amounts of money to enter the casino business in the coastal town. Through a series of complex transactions, he ultimately assumed control of a half-finished mega-project known as the Taj Mahal Casino in Atlantic City in 1988. By the close of the decade, Trump's portfolio boasted not only three casinos, but also a diverse array of properties and even the Trump Shuttle, an airline offering hourly flights that connected New York to Boston and Washington. While the 1980s had been marked by economic growth and expansion, the early 1990s presented a different set of challenges. 
the once booming real estate market began to falter, and the casino industry faced headwinds of its own. Trump's heavy borrowing, coupled with his ambitious ventures, left him vulnerable to financial instability when economic conditions took a downturn. The financial crisis in the early 1990s was exacerbated by the enormous debt load that Trump had accumulated over the years, making it increasingly difficult for him to manage his financial obligations. His investments and business ventures, while successful during the prosperous times, proved to be high-risk endeavors when economic conditions became less favorable. The recession that struck in 1990 had a devastating impact on Donald Trump's vast business empire as it struggled to keep up with the colossal debt payments he owed. Among the ventures that faced the brunt of the financial turmoil was the Trump Shuttle, an airline venture that never managed to turn a profit and eventually had to default on its loans. Trump vividly described the dire situation in his book, The Art of the Comeback, recalling, by the spring of 1990, I was deeply in the red. My empire was hemorrhaging value. As the early 1990s unfolded, the financial challenges continued to mount. In 1991, the Taj Mahal, one of Trump's prized casinos in Atlantic City, filed for bankruptcy, signaling the severity of his financial woes. By the fall of 1991, the dire financial situation of Donald Trump's casino empire had reached a breaking point, and all three of his Atlantic City casinos had filed for bankruptcy. However, a ray of hope emerged when the New Jersey Casino Control Commission unanimously approved Trump's bailout plan. This plan allowed him to use his free Atlantic City casinos as collateral to secure a $65 million loan which would be instrumental in stabilizing his precarious financial position. Trump had to make significant sacrifices to move forward, including selling off his airline, his yacht, and a substantial portion of one of his earliest ventures, the Grand Hyatt Hotel in Manhattan. He candidly acknowledged the multitude of challenges he faced at the time, saying, You know I had a wife who was suing me for $2 billion, I had the banks, I had this, I had that. The following year, in 1992, both of his other Atlantic City casinos, the Castle and Trump Plaza, also filed for bankruptcy. It was a tumultuous period for Trump, marked by a series of setbacks in the business world. However, by 1993, there was a glimmer of hope on the horizon. Trump's brand name and the value of his casino licenses proved to be assets that creditors still believed in. As a result, they began to extend loans to him once more, helping to stabilize his financial situation and keep his ventures afloat. One asset that Trump managed to retain during this tumultuous period was an undeveloped piece of land on Manhattan's west side, which he had originally purchased in 1985. At the time of purchase, Trump had envisioned an ambitious development project for the site. However, by 1994, the real estate market had taken a downturn, making it increasingly difficult for him to meet his financial obligations related to the land. Consequently, Trump made the decision to sell off portions of the property and negotiated a deal where he retained a share of the profits from any future development. This marked a significant shift in his role from being primarily a developer to becoming more focused on branding. His name would grace some of the buildings that eventually rose on the land, signifying a new chapter in his career. A significant turning point came in 1995 when Trump transformed his Trump Plaza Casino into a publicly traded company known as Trump Hotels and Casino Resorts, which he retained control of. This strategic move marked the beginning of his efforts to restructure his financial obligations. The Wall Street Journal reported at the time that Trump managed to negotiate a deal with banks that effectively wiped out the remaining personal debt he owed, paying less than half of the approximately $110 million he was indebted to, according to a source familiar with the matter. The year 1995 appeared to be a watershed moment for Trump as he successfully navigated his own debt troubles. 
However, it's important to note that this financial restructuring left many casino workers, contractors, and lenders facing their own challenges. By 1996, Fortune magazine was lauding Trump's Houdini-like escape from creditors, acknowledging his ability to emerge from the brink of financial ruin. The decade of the 1990s had been a roller coaster ride for Donald Trump, marked by financial turmoil, bankruptcy filings, and ultimately, a resurgence that Shoka said his resilience in the face of adversity. Trump, in reflecting on these challenging times, noted, Who knows better about hard times than me? I had a company, it was doing well, I had tremendous debt, like this country, and in 1990, the whole country, it just went very, very bad. His experiences during this period would go on to shape his approach to business and his eventual foray into politics, serving as a backdrop to his broader narrative of resilience and adaptability in the face of adversity. The path Donald Trump took to emerge from the financial crisis of the early 1990s and embark on a fresh round of business dealings remains somewhat shrouded in mystery. Even experts and officials who closely examined his financial maneuvers during that time found it challenging to fully comprehend his strategies. As reported by the Wall Street Journal regarding Trump's remarkable financial turnaround in 1995, an attorney for the New Jersey Attorney General's office, which had extensively studied Trump's financial dealings, stated, I'm not certain if there's any one person on our staff that really understood it. This complexity only adds to the intrigue surrounding Trump's ability to bounce back from near-financial catastrophe. The recent New York Times report has shed further light on the story of Trump's comeback. The publication's documents reveal the extraordinary tax benefits that Trump, who was the Republican presidential nominee at the time, derived from the financial wreckage he left behind in the early 1990s. The report highlights that a $916 million loss in 1995 would have had the substantial impact of offsetting more than $50 million a year in taxable income over a span of 18 years. Donald Trump's financial turnaround in the mid-1990s can be seen as a combination of strategic maneuvers. One key aspect of his recovery was walking away from substantial debts, effectively shedding the financial burden that had weighed him down during the early 1990s. Simultaneously, he embarked on a bold strategy of borrowing more capital to rebuild his real estate empire, seizing opportunities in the real estate market. What makes this recovery particularly noteworthy is that it occurred without the looming specter of federal income tax bills, thanks to the significant loss he reported in 1995. As Donald Trump's financial situation stabilized in the mid-1990s, he began the process of reasserting his presence in the public eye. He embarked on a series of publicity stunts that showcased his knack for grabbing headlines. One such stunt was a 1995 pizza commercial where he made a memorable appearance alongside Ivana Trump. In the commercial, Trump delivered lines like, Doing, but do people think it's wrong? Isn't it? But it feels all right. Then it's a deal. This cheeky advertisement not only added a touch of humor to his public persona, but also marked a return to the flamboyant Trump of the 1980s. By the close of the decade, Trump was once again sounding like the brash, self-assured figure of the 1980s. He confidently discussed his finances, emphasizing his resurgence from the depths of financial hardship. During an interview, he stated, Back in the 1990s, I owed something like $900 million. Your empire was pretty much more than that. You owed more than that. 975 was personally guaranteed. That was just the small part. That was the harder debt. But I owned many, many billions of dollars, and now my company is much bigger and stronger than it was in the 80s. This resurgence in his business fortunes also coincided with his flirtations with a potential presidential run. In 1999, Donald Trump was on the brink of making a decision that had been hinted at during the 1980s, whether to seriously consider a bid for the White House. He made headlines by announcing his departure from the Republican Party to join the Reform Party, a move that generated significant attention in political circles. 
During this time, he was widely regarded as one of the largest developers in New York, further enhancing his public profile. Amidst discussions about a potential presidential run, he even shared his thoughts on a possible running mate, suggesting that Oprah Winfrey would be a great choice. His comment, oh, I think Oprah would be great, seriously. I think that probably that would be serious, actually. Added an element of unpredictability to his political aspirations and highlighted his ability to capture media attention with his unfiltered remarks. These events in the late 1990s marked a period of resurgence and reinvention for Donald Trump. His foray into the political arena, while not yet realized as a presidential campaign, hinted at the unconventional and dynamic trajectory that would ultimately lead him to the White House in the years to come. Rudy Giuliani, a Trump campaign surrogate, emphasized the businessman's financial resurgence in 1995 during an appearance on Meet the Press, suggesting that Trump's ability to navigate his way out of financial hardship and subsequently rebuild his empire showcased his financial acumen, even going so far as to call him a genius. On the other side of the political spectrum, Hillary Clinton, Trump's Democratic opponent at the time, responded to the New York Times story by releasing a statement. In her statement, she emphasized the magnitude of Donald Trump's past business failures, describing them as colossal. She pointed out that during his business endeavors, he had left a trail of small businesses that he hadn't fully compensated, laid off workers, and walked away from communities that had been impacted by his financial challenges. She also noted the irony that despite these setbacks, Trump appeared to have successfully avoided paying federal income taxes for nearly two decades. The varying perspectives on Trump's financial history and tax strategies underscore the polarizing nature of his public image and the complexities of his business career. His resurgence in the mid-1990s remains a subject of both admiration and criticism, depending on one's political viewpoint. Regardless, it is clear that this chapter of his financial history continues to be a topic of intense scrutiny and debate in the public sphere. In conclusion, the 1990s was a decade of financial ups and downs for Donald Trump. From the soaring heights of the 1980s to the brink of bankrupt sigh in the early 1990s, he showcased remarkable resilience and adaptability in rebuilding his empire. This tumultuous period saw him transition from being a real estate developer to a brand in his own right, paving the way for a future in politics. What are your thoughts on Trump's roller coaster journey in the 1990s? How do you view his ability to rebound from financial adversity? Share your insights in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more intriguing content. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.